Jason Floyd here at the Rebel Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey, host of Bellator 118, which takes place tomorrow, as I said, here at the Ovation Hall, here with Mike Muchitelli, who is, you know what, a couple weeks ago, you were just fighting a light heavyweight tournament matchup. Right. All of a sudden, this fight has a lot of meaning. Uh, when did you get the call to say, hey, this is now a tournament fight? Uh, just a few weeks ago. You know, the exact day doesn't ring a bell, but, you know, two, three weeks m most, you know. But uh, for me, it was just... My opponent's still the same, stage is still the same, cage is still the same size. So, yeah, I'll sign on that line in a heartbeat. That's what I'm here to do, so looking forward to this. When this fight was offered to you, was it a little bit of a surprise? Because, you know, we typically don't see Bellator put, you know, top prospects in a division against each other. Did that kind of surprise you? Uh, no, you know, the, part, the, the thing is, is you're trying to see who's the best. I mean, that's what we're here to do. You know, Bellator prides itself on its tournament status. It's, it's you know, best on the best. And, uh, you know, when they line you up against another top guy, you know, that just means that now you're ready. You know, now it's time to break onto the scene. And so when they up the stakes even more by making a tournament bout, it all just kind of fell into place. It just seemed to make sense. Your last fight, you went to the third round for the first time in your career. I was there. And, uh, you know, obviously you're probably going to learn something about yourself anytime that you go in those deep waters where you've not been before. What did you learn about yourself? Uh... That I had a that that you know I can't say that, that I learned too much you know you know enough about yourself going in that's what the fight camp's for so that you already know everything about yourself before you step into that cage and you know I had never had to go to the distance I always knew I could and now it just it just gave me that extra confidence to know that when it's really down sometimes when you take some hard shots you know I'm still going to keep coming at you until I, until I get my hand raised so it was a, it was a good feeling <laughs> is would you say you're a more confident fighter because of that a hundred percent yeah I mean. Even if uh, you, you feel good going into a third round before it ever happens, you know, I've always ended them quick. So it's just the unknown. Now it's a known. Now, now I feel more confident about it if it comes up again. Now, I know I was reading some quotes that Bellator sent out uh, where you moved your camp down to Philadelphia. Was it just simply you wanted to get around new training partners, maybe learn some new techniques? Uh, you know, it was kind of more than that. It, it wasn't just uh, about who I was going to be with, which, you know, down there I'm going with top-notch guys from all over the world, obviously. Um, but it was also about just getting out of my comfort zone. You know, if I'm going to start to really make a push for this belt, and this was before I knew it was a tournament fight, I made the decision is you got to get away from where you know and love. You know, I, I was living out of a, a one bag and off an air mattress. There was no furniture. It was an empty apartment. It was just uh, me and training day in, day out. This is that's where I made the decision that this is going to be how I'm going to make my, my, my mark in my future. This is what I'm going to make my life be about. Now, when you look at Liam McGrary, you know, you're both tall, linky guys, but one of the things you said is you feel the advantages, you fought tall guys before, and he hasn't. It kind of explained that mentality of knowing the fact that you fought someone as lengthy as him. Well, I mean, we just talked about it a lot. You know, that which you know, that which you've experienced, you're more comfortable in, in the ring with. You know, he, a lot of his techniques are straightforward, one-twos, front kicks, things like that. A lot of people can't reach him. I can. I can still lay hands on him and apply pressure, and I'm planning on doing a lot of that. And, uh, you know, my first fight, they brought me in to face an undefeated 5-0, and 6'6 six six guy. And, and, you know, I made quick work of him. I, I plan on just keeping my, my, my steam train going. This is familiar territory all across the board, and, and let's just go and do what I've been doing. Do you look at him and say, average fight time, just over Mint and Bellator, that maybe the gas tank could be an issue with him? Uh, you know, even if he, he thinks he's in great shape, just like I thought I was in great shape, I'm not, you know, I can't, I won last fight, but I didn't look great in the third. But, uh, you know, I thought I had a great gas tank, but when you get there, it's a different story. <laughs> and so he can think he's in great shape, but, you know, yeah, I'm going to put the pressure on him. You know, my first few fights, very similar, 30 seconds, three minutes, you know, things like that. Quick matches. When I get pushed into those later rounds, you got to discover if you got it down there, and I'm going to make him go through the discovery process. You know, it's going to be a big thing. As some people may not know, you do have the third fastest submission in Bellator history. Some people may or may not know that. Uh, but when you look at this tournament, eight man tournament, Bjorn Remy just told me it's an eight man. Do you feel like you have an advantage because you're their first fight and you're going to have a little extra time as opposed to the other guys? Oh, 100. percent You know, I'm not trying to look past this match, but if you don't plan for your future, the future ain't going to happen. So, in the back of my head, I know. I'm lucky to get this shot this early. It's before the summer series even really kicks off, technically. You know, it, yeah. Do I still want to make it a quick fight? Yeah, that's my MO. And when I go into the cage, I'm not looking to draw out a decision or wrestle out for four, you know, for, for three rounds. I'm out there to end my fights quickly and definitively, and that's what I'm looking to do here regardless. Mike, good luck tomorrow night, and we look forward to seeing your fight live on Spike TV, which, of course, starts at 9 p.m. Eastern time.